Hey, this is a nice rainbow trout. And we're going to be making a nice pattern off of this fish because the pattern when you do a fish for fish mounting is everything. You just can't take a length and a girth and expect to have it fit there. I get a little more elaborate in my process of this, but it's all for the it's all for the good in the end because without all the measurements you're kind of lost and stuff there. So uh, we're going to get ready and skin this. And before I start, I got a little diagram here to show you where we're going to start. Just as a rough thing here, this is basically our fish. And we're going to be taking a series of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven key measurements off the fish. And if you notice the key measurements are at key locations on the fish, breaks and fins and stuff is your body shape changes. And all this is going to be uh, to help you later in the patterning process when we fit either a commercial mannequin or carve a commercial ma or carve a mannequin to fit. And as you can see, we've got a different variety of uh, fish heads here that we're going to be coming back to um, for matching up to this skin here. This is the line of different size female heads right here, as you can see. If this was a male fish, you would be looking at something pretty much like this, different sizes, little different shapes as we go up in different, uh, for the larger males. But this is a difference right here between the males and the females. It, it's pretty obvious. Okay, we take a, just a black magic marker and I'll start just making a nice rough tracing of the fish here. Stopping it usually at the fins where they interfere and we'll go back and trace those in. <clears throat> and what I'm doing is I go here, going around the fish, I'm making the little marks on the key points, which we will be coming back and filling in across the pattern and taking our measurements on. Take your measuring tape and you can look against there and you can take your nose to gill measurement for the first one, gill to lower jaw and see we're talking almost a quarter inch difference there. And then you can take your width measurements with a caliper, take it, press it against there and you're talking closed gill measurement now too and most of the heads are cast with a slightly open gill so if the gills are going to be a little bit more open on uh, order uh, that's just because they're cast for open gills you can measure it write it on your pattern and then the last measurement is going to be the height measurement and that's the point where we took on our pattern with the little dip and that's where the scales stop and meet the smooth part of the head right there and uh, Again, making sure that's kind of open. You can take your measurement right under the throat latch. So we start with the first measurement, which is going to be, you know, set this up here so you can follow along as we go. It's going to be right behind the gills. And we'll take our circumference and we've got to uh, write the first measurement down. Okay, we're going to start on the fish skin here. And as you can see, there's a lot of tissue left around the dorsal fin here. And this takes a little bit of a trick. You need a good sharp knife, fingers for guides. And I lay my finger in here and I just gently go against the skin. And I'm going to progress down the dorsal fin here. Very lightly, cutting the skin away down till I see the roots of the fins. You can see the gray part here and that's where the fins are sticking up. We want to get down in there. Get as much of that out as we can. Tail requires a little more finesse here. <clears throat> We've got a little stub of meat left, left in here. We've got a flap here to start getting into it. I usually take my knife and this is usually if I'm going to cut a hole in the skin, this is where I do it. Gently start to work it open. And I'll take my fish skinning knife because it's more gentle on the skin. Using my thumb as a guide, just kind of have to watch it and guide it in there. And you got to take it all the way out to where you see the scales meet the... Okay, we're going to start cleaning our fish skin. I like to lay it out flat. I uh, have everything nice and smooth, no wrinkles in the skins. Wrinkles in the skin will cause you to cut it. And you can... The way I like to do mine is I like to start with a paper towel in the left hand for gripping. And I start going across the skin. You don't ever want to go this way. It tends to loosen the scales. So I like to just go across 
and I'll start doing the edges here first and then working out as I go. And with a nice sharpened scraper, as you can see, usually one pass across the flesh and it will remove pretty much everything you need. Take our skin, which is very oily and greasy, and I've got a bucket here of soap water, Dawn dishwashing liquid, an ounce or two and some water here. And we're gonna just throw that skin in there real quick. Knock off all that initial grease and oil that's from the process here. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna follow up with this brush. We've got a lot of uh, little areas, as you can see, right in tight against this pelvic fins here, you can little white tissue in here. You can take this little steel brush and just gently get in there with a little soap and water. I'll clean it right up. Use your finger for support. It just takes that white fat in there and just liquefies it, takes it right out of there. You can do your sanding of your mannequins now and you're not gonna have any sharp edges grabbing and tearing on your forms. I use start off with a coarse and then we go to a fine. And this is, I'd also re recommend you do this on even on commercial mannequins. You're dealing here with the skin on these commercial mannequins and that needs to be removed before proper uh, mounting can take place because there's nothing for your hide paste to stick to on here. You've just got the wax and the skin. So these work really great. You can take them and you can just give them a light sanding and remove that all the way around and then finish it off with your, uh, with your fine. And we've got some tough in here, tough in fin treatment. We're gonna paint this onto our dry fins. And usually it takes about two coats, one coat in the morning, let it dry, put another coat in the afternoon. On a fish of this size, two coats is sufficient to uh, build up the fins on them, protect them. You can just take it, stick it on here. Stick it on there. Take your scissors. Trim it around, make sure we get all the holes filled up in there, and then we can go ahead and brush our fin material on there. Trim it. To take this sharp, this finished edge off, what I like to do is just take a little lighter, just heat it up real quick, set the lighter down, then take it and pull on it. It'll make a ragged tip on your fins, which will uh, make it look more natural, blend into the other ones here. This is going to give you strength on your fins. It's also going to fill in a lot of that shrinkage you can feel that the ridges in there it's going to fill in those little valleys and make it uh, more life fleshy looking and depending on your fish depends on how many coats you're going to need a fish of this size like I said two coats is probably sufficient larger fish like big pike and muskie take up towards a half a dozen coats on them to really build up that meaty look